Very tricky, very fun. Um, I guess my first question is, how many of you um, in your institutions, organizations, have tackled the competency framework and learning plans so far? Anyone? And part of the reason I ask is because I sat in a room last year about this time, right? And um, we all were like, competency frameworks, cool, what do we do with them? Um, and so we've been working um, throughout the last year with several of our clients and um, looking at the competency frameworks, really trying to identify when it's useful, um, how, kind of leading back to yesterday, how we can be innovative with that tool. Um, and then also thinking ahead about what else is needed. Um, where can we push the boundaries there? Where can we extend that? So we um, wanted to talk for a few minutes uh, today about kind of how to get started with competency-based uh, frameworks and learning plans. Thanks. This is Courtney Bentley, our VP of Services, and I'm Claire Maysha, Director of Support, by the way. Hi, everyone. Sorry. We're here uh, uh, representing Ething today, as you could tell by the giant logo on the screen. Um, so I'm going to start off uh, just talking a little bit about, um, you know, where we our sort of read of the pulses so far. Um, so in overall overarching industry trends with CBE. So uh, definitely, you know, K-12 schools lead the charge. Um, it's easy for them because they often have some sort of curriculum, state standard framework that, okay, you know, here's where I can, uh, you know, build out a framework within Moodle and then, and then from there explore, um, you know, how you actually want to implement that, tie that to courses, activities, and so on. Um, worked with a couple different schools so far. Um, you know, they've dumped me this big spreadsheet of standards. Um, some, you know, sometimes they break it down by grade level, sometimes by subject matter, depends kind of. Um, usually once you get to high school, it kind of divides up into uh, subject matter. Uh, so that is, makes, you know, you have something to start with off as a foundation. That's sort of the hardest part. Um, in, in the workplace, in, in businesses, in, in corporations, um, they are more eager and readily able to implement. Um, they may have training programs that they've been trying to, um, trying to, um, you know, e-learning a fi and, and bring them into the digital age rather than having giant binders full of things and then testing and, and compliance, tracking and, and all of these things. So things like new hire onboarding, product training, um, you know, your workplace harassment and all of those things that, you know, you're obligated to do. Um, and so it's easy to translate that to a competency framework. And um, the nice part is then they can track that with learning plans, see where people are, what they still need to complete. Um, and then um, in higher ed, it's a little bit more of sort of the Wild West and uncharted territory. They all want to do something with it, but they don't really know where to start, what the right, you know, approach is. Um, so we've been really, um, you know, taking a hands-on approach, working with these schools to talk through um, what they would like to, to do within Moodle. Um, you know, a lot of these, um, one, one school we worked with, they want to take their sort of teacher ed portfolio. Um, they're really sick of task stream, which I'm sure some of you in the room are also, you know, have one opinion or another of Taskstream. So they don't want to pay for Taskstream anymore, and they want to translate what they've been doing in Taskstream into Moodle. And the new competency framework makes that possible. So we've been working with them to build that out um, and allow the, the students to kind of attach their evidence of what they've been doing in the classroom and their field placements um, and, and showcase that in Moodle for all to see outside of creditors, the whole nine yards. Um, and then also um, programmatic assessment. Um, I've worked with, um, you know, a master's in, in history, a psychology program. They have their outcomes, um, and they've been doing some sort of crazy manual assessment process, um, you know, paper-based or rubric-based or, or something, um, you know, maybe partially using Moodle, where they want to know, are the students actually graduating, um, meeting these outcomes? Are we doing, you know... Are we doing the job they're paying us for? So um, we, we've been doing, we've been seeing a lot of that in the higher ed space as far as um, you know approaches to how they might adopt a competency framework and, and where else they can take it. Uh, so so okay, great. You have you know a list of outcomes or a list of standards. You know then what? Uh, so we've been really um, step one has been to sort of meet with them and give them you know the 
the overarching tutorial. You know, what is the competency framework? How do you, you know, develop scales to use, to be used by that framework? Um, you know, how, showing them how the frameworks can be linked to courses, specific activities, um, and then the student facing side of that. What does a learning plan look like? How would the teachers interact with a learning plan? How do the students interact with a learning plan? So that's sort of, you know, step one. They may have seen, you know, some of the, some of Mary's videos on HQ about it and they want to know a little bit more, have a more, you know, specific conversation about their institution. So step one, sort of give them the lay of the land. Step two um, is kind of, you know, see what you got. So those examples I already talked about. Um, it's helpful if you have some exi existing set of standards or outcomes to work with. Um, so, you know, the K-12, you know, the grade eight math standards or the, you know, psychology department outcomes. Um, and then in the workplace, thinking about, you know, what sort of training programs, initiatives you want to be able to track um, and, and see people's progress through um, and, and how they could benefit from taking something maybe paper-based or somewhat manual and, and use Moodle to their advantage to kind of take that to the next level. Um, so then uh, the next step is really to, to play with it, uh, flesh out the standards. Um, I've been kind of it's very scary uh, for some of them to, to show, you know, how to build out the framework. So I've, I've helped by mocking up a couple, you know, initial examples and then walking them through, you know, okay, so now you want to do grade nine math. Let's, let's walk through, you know, how that gets fleshed out. Um, experiment with how the pieces fit together and, and get them thinking about, you know, are you going to link these to courses? Are you going to link them to activities? Um, you know, what sort of implementation path um, do you think is feasible for, you know, your goals for the competency framework? Um, so just a few examples here. I, I was saying, you know, eighth grade, eighth grade competencies here. Um, and, and so you could see language arts, math, science, um, you know, by grade level, by subject matter, it all depends. Um, this is, uh, you know, our higher ed example. So the same school, um, I've been working with them on their teacher license portfolio framework and one also for, um, they have a, a master's uh, in history program. So they want to take uh, what they've been doing and, and help Moodle help them, <laughs> allow Moodle to help them. Um, and then, so here's drilled down into the framework, um, fleshing out the different, um, you know, domains of the teacher portfolio, um, the different performance criteria that they have to, you know, prove that they have, have met. Uh, you know, workplace, a good example, you know, compliance-wise, OSHA training uh, can be translated into a framework. And, and then, so once we show them the framework, show them what it could look like, they get all excited, and then you kind of have to pause, and, and sometimes, you know, they have to swallow the hard truths of, well, there are, you know, if you really want to use this to its full potential, there's some work that has to be done. We were talking a little bit about this yesterday. Um, you know, using, using Moodle for all those courses that are being taught in that program, enabling activity completion in those, in those courses if you want those, you know, competencies in the framework to be automatically triggered. You know, some um, in higher ed, in my experience so far, they're not ready to take it down to the activity level yet. They're probably going to play doing some stuff manually with the student attaching evidence, teachers, um, you know, evaluating that. And, um, you know, I think they'll get there, but this is sort of getting their feet wet and, um, and but they, overwhelmingly are excited about, like, oh, how can we, now it's kind of lighting a fire. How can we get the rest of the faculty who have maybe been dragging their feet into Moodle, doing more, um, having students submit work there that can then be tied back to the framework? So the next, um, and as I was saying, adding that complexity, taking it farther. Um, I've, been, I've been working with a lot of schools to kind of introduce what, what could be with them, um, and starting slow with what they've got, um, but you know, obviously it's much more powerful than that. It can be much more sophisticated. So um, Courtney is gonna talk a little bit more about that. So Claire brings the reality and then I kind of introduce the crazy beyond that. Um, so I wanna talk a few minutes about some of the options for taking it further. Um, you know, any of you in the room who know me know that I like to get into 
into things and sort of beat on them um, as successfully as possible. And that's what I did with the competency framework. Um, you know, one of the things that Claire was mentioning was the idea of having the courses set up so that there is the completion tracking, which then in turn is going to trigger um, those, uh, those scales within the competency framework, within the learning plan, so that it all kind of is scaffold. It all flows in together. Um, you know, the automatic rating is going to take careful planning, lots of consideration in order to make that happen. Um, so really coming up with a plan across the board about how you're going to integrate that, how you're going to implement that um, for these learning plans, for these competency frameworks. Um, most of the time, we're finding that with the automatic rating, so if you're not going to use the roles and some of the other capabilities so that there are reviewers who need to go in, take a look at what's been submitted, um, and then select the appropriate rating. If you want it to be a little more automagical, um, you know, it's really going to benefit from that hierarchical structure is what we're finding most of the time. Um, so this is just an example you'll see um, in another couple slides. We're using kind of a multi-level here. I broke it down just so that you could see it um, in terms of kind of that main competency and then sub one and sub two. And then each of those subs kind of has those foundational pieces to it. Um, and you'll see that play out in a, in the next slide in a minute. Um, <clears throat> using the competency rules. So that's one of the things that was sort of hidden for a while in the documentation. Um, I, I actually, you know, dug it out of the original developer documents and then now it's it's been added, so most of you have probably seen this, but the competency rules really are going to give you a lot of capability in terms of how you want to handle um, those automatic triggers. So, um, you know, allowing for completion of multiple child competencies to then automatically trigger um, the one above it. So um, allowing your students, your learners, even your teachers as they are kind of combining elements across um, courses or across programs to sort of see how those flow up and work together. So I build these foundational um, skills and then those might trigger a sort of a higher level um, within the competency, so trigger one of those, those scales above it. Um, the other one that I think is really, really interesting, and, and we've been looking at this a lot in terms of learner-driven um, types of competency frameworks, so using the points competency rules. Does everybody know that that's hidden in there? Am I the only one that was like, wow, this is awesome? Yeah, so basically what this allows you to do is to set up the competencies um, so you can have a whole handful of them that, um, or courses, whatever the case is, that flow into meeting a competency. Um, and as you can see here, my screen is really tiny even with my bifocals on. Um, you can see that you have multiple options here. So option one, option two, option three, option four. So basically the learner might have different um, ways that they could achieve that competency. Um, it may be that one of the courses in Moodle is completely self-paced and that might be worth a certain number of points toward the competency. Um, you may have micro-learning where you've broken out um, kind of smaller segments that work toward that competency. And so they may need to do both of those in order to get sort of the points. So basically what you're allowing is for the learner to kind of go in, uh, determine which thing is going to best meet their needs and their learning goals, um, and then it uses those point values to help them achieve that competency. So I feel like there's a lot of power in this. Um, I Hopefully this is new for a couple of you and kind of get some gears uh, turning about how this might work. Um, I think, again, you know, I'm biased, but I think this is going to be really powerful in those instances where you want to set up the learning plan, you want to tie in a lot of different options for learners, and then you want to flip it so that they have the option to go in, dig around, figure out what's going to meet their needs. Now, again, it's not going to work in all of our institutions, right? I mean, let's face it, in all of our higher eds, like there's a curriculum and this is how you meet that. Um, but when we're thinking about competency, and I think a lot of those conversations that are going on right now, um, you know, CBEN and all of these other places where they're really talking about competencies, talking about changes in higher education, um, I think this is a really interesting way that we can um, begin to explore that. 
So what does this look like to the learner? Um, I told you I'd bring you back to an example of what this might look like. So here's where we've put together their learning plan um, with that multi-level. Um, and so as you can see at the bottom, um, foundational three and four, they've got a foundational rating. So they've, they've achieved those with that foundational level. Um, and then that's automatically triggering that sub two for a basic rating. Um, you'll notice that the rest of those, they've got one more foundational met. So that main one at S1 is sort of waiting on them to achieve all of those other competencies. And then they would essentially have met that main one. Does this make sense? Does this Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Um, this one I had just the dependencies. I didn't pull the point sample. I don't know. Do you know, Mary? Um, so the question was, if we're using the point system, what does that look like to the learner in their learning plan? And I think it would just show them which ones they've met. It wouldn't show them marked for any of the others. I'll pull up my demo box and we can look at it. How's that? Um, so next challenges. Um, I, I feel like these are kind of the things that have been bubbling as we've been working on these. I think, um, you know, as I mentioned, I think yesterday to some people, I think reporting um, is obviously a place where we can really expand this. Um, for example, two main sort of reports that I think people are going to need and, and are beginning to look for, things like a competency coverage report. So can I go in and see um, a clear shot of the competency frameworks with all of the components and where those map out? You can do it on a limited basis, but I think a one sort of clear shot of that is going to be really helpful for people. Um, also things like a competency coverage unmapped items, so kind of the reverse of that. So where do we have holes um, in what we're offering that aren't connected back to those competencies? Um, so just a couple of examples. I think also deepening the connections, making this more granular. I mean, we see with... Um, with other similar types of systems, um, you know, for example, competencies all the way down to an individual question level. Um, seems kind of crazy to me, but I think eventually we may, um, you know, get there. We may push there a little bit. Um, I can see some ways that we can do it with tagging currently and, and some ways to bring it together just with the tools that we have right now. Um, but I think that we'll, the community will push that a little bit more as we get more um, mature in what we're trying to do. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think the last one is just the biggest question in people's minds is the ability to set thresholds to trigger those ratings. Because if you've, if you've worked with this already, you basically set the default. Um, and so completion at any threshold triggers for that sort of default. Um, rating. And so I think people are beginning to say, you know, that's always one of the questions they come up with is, okay, well, if they make a 75 and they've completed it, that's kind of okay. They've met the standard. Um, but what about the students who really achieve higher? Um, and that's where that manual rating is going to come in. So um, questions, thoughts? Hopefully this has sparked some interest in your minds to go dig around. Like I mentioned, I have my demo box. I'll pull up my site and we can dig around if anybody has questions, wants to look at this. Yeah, or once you get home later and you play around and, yeah. and have questions for us, you know, feel free to, uh, feel free to email me, pick our brains. Um, you know, we learn uh, with you as, as more and more schools uh, begin to experiment with this. So um, we're, we're having fun. Yeah, and we'd love to hear what you're doing with competencies too, so. Absolutely. Please find us and, and share that because we'd love to hear it. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.